That's where that is. Have you ever wanted to do a thing, but you knew that you had to do a thing before you did it, another thing, so you kind of waited? Well, here we are. I'm about to do the thing. Oh, I forgot how heavy that is. Wow. Okay, that thing is this. A 55-inch touchscreen. Now, this TV, touchscreen TV, is actually made by a company called Elo, and it weighs about 200 pounds. And, oh, man. Actually, I don't even want to lay it down because it's so heavy. I don't want to have to deal with that. But it's 55 inches of touchscreen capability. Now I had on my person two of these at one point. I gave one to watch the go. Actually, that had a TV stand that rolled, which I had no room for whatsoever. But that one was newer, half the weight, and I think it ran better. I didn't really have a use for this thing. I still really technically don't have a realistic use for this thing. But I've been playing with Home Assistant and I want to try to like make this thing a thing with Home Assistant. Problem is, it is literally 200 pounds. Like actually, Let's look this up. There we go. Okay, it is 157 pounds. So I was close. The problem is that if I actually do want to use this, I can't exactly just mount this to studs. I mean, that's like, how do you do that? The answer obviously is make new studs. Now I'm no engineer, but that looks like I can put a bolt in it. So let's go see if I have bolts. Now I actually just happen to keep every single bolt that I've ever collected down in a bag down here. So all those TVs that you get that comes with all the mounting stuff, I just happen to keep all that stuff. Move that out of the way and look at all that. See, see, you never know when you're gonna need that. This is why you save everything. There it goes, over there. Make sure what else I got, I don't know what those are. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. None of that looks like it'd work. Holy crap, I was looking for that, Jesus. Let's put it back there so I can forget it next time. Really need to clean this stuff. Like, organize it, clean it. What do you think? Yeah? You agree, don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> One of these should be it. Okay, so this is going to be a very scientific method of testing to see if something fits in the hole. Nope. That's too big. Nope. That's too small. Oh, so close. It can rub the sides, but still too small. Is that the same? No, it's not. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just right. Look at that. Yes. It's just right. See? Size matters. Now I just gotta find three more that are exactly the same. Actually, two problems. One, if you're familiar with the bolts that you get with most TVs, like they're just, they're very low quality metal. I've worked with these before. They they do not, they're not very high quality metal. They will not handle very much stress, right? Their sheer strength rating or whatever, very low. It's the absolute cheapest metal that you can ever get. Two, slightly more important, it's too short for what I was gonna use it for. So that's all the way in. I got the girth, but I just can't go the distance here. To clarify, that was on the premise of taking a two by four, laying it flat, putting it on the back, and then drilling holes for this to go in through the two by four into the TV with a washer. And then I could like lift this up to the wall, right? Like put it on the ground, lift it up to the wall and then, you know, attach the two by fours to the wall. Right. So it, it would have its own support. Cause let's be honest, I'm not. But you know what? I'm just eyeballing it. So let's go get some wood. Definitely need to organize everything. So this is a piece of two by four and this. So this is one by four and this two by four, which also fun fact, I don't know if you guys know this or not. Let me set this down on my batteries here. Totally not gonna fall. Uh, two by fours are not two by four. They are actually three and a half by like one and a half, I wanna say. Very competent here. Three and a half. Yep. Yep. By by one and a half. Hmm. You didn't know that, did you? Same thing with one by fours. Three and a half. It's like uh, it's not half. Three quarters. Yeah. Yes. Yo. <laughs> So if I were to do, obviously that board is really skinny and I wouldn't want to put 200 pounds on it, but if I were to do that, which is a one by four, that would not be big enough. So let's look at this. Oh, see, too big. Ideally, this is the max, right? So I would want the maximum to be like right here. So I'd be able to 
put some strength on it. So that would be tightening it down. Coming up a little short there. If you can imagine, put a two by four on the back here, just a long two by four, and then that would let me mount it to a wall. Back to the garage. I don't see anything, anything. There we go, there we go. No labels, of course. So let's just look in every freaking drawer. I did get this like kit that has a bunch of different sizes. Those are longer, those are very skinny. Okay, let's fast forward. I'll just go through it. Oh, I think I'm close. I mean, I'm not close, but I'm closer than I was before. I'm a little nervous on the, uh, the, the pattern though. I think the threads are thicker. So, and it's technically too large, but you can add more wood if you need to. Let's go do a size test. Oh yeah, definitely not the right thread. Wait, oh, no, no, definitely not. I can force it in, but I will forever ruin it. I need bolts. I guess I'm moving to step two. Better check everything twice because, you know, that's how you do it. You know, when you, when you have just, look at that. When you have random stuff, like you just, you, you think to yourself, I gotta have it. That is too big. Probably why I never evolved into the final form of dad because even I disappoint myself. Step two is I know I have actually, I, I have a power in here somewhere. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Step two is to probably make sure this works before I really go out of my way uh, to go to the hardware store. There we go. I heard something. I heard something. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, yes! It's alive! Okay, it was just white. I went to go do the scene, and it, you know what? Screw you. Uh, I need the computer. And, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. There we go. There we go. Things are out. Things are coming together. Oh, yeah. This is that uh, um, thing. It's the thing with the stuff that I still have. I forgot what it was. Simply Nuck. Yeah, yeah. Simply Nuck. That's what it was. 32 gigs of RAM, Intel 10th gen, terabytes of SSD. I don't know, it should run a touch screen, right? Right? Just gotta, you know, plug it in. Well, I guess, how does this even connect? Uh, HDMI and USB 2.0. Yeah, I should have saw that coming. I wonder if the other one was USB 2.0, I don't remember. And again, drawer full of stuff. Oh gosh, that is not what I'm looking for. No. There we go. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. You see, this is why you keep everything. You need an HDMI cable. Uh... Wait, wait, is that it? Yep, HDMI. Poor remnants of the server that I'm building. I had to set it down. This is the home assistant parts. I had to set it down, but I have something planned. I mean, it's still working. It's just barely put together. Right, let's plug this in. USB 2.0, there we go. There we go. We get it. There we go. Oh, perfect. You know, that means that I can have home assistant running and I can let the cat play with it because the cat likes chasing mouse and doing stuff. So if I let the cat control my house, she can take over. Oh yeah, I had MB on this. I forgot about that. Which I actually never canceled MB. That was months ago. Okay, after making all the noises, look at this. Look at that. It just works. Oh, well, that's cool. Okay, I don't have a keyboard attached to this, so I'm gonna go launch it with any desk. I think I can, I can actually get most of the stuff that I want. I just gotta remember my, damn it. Again, there we go. Ooh, there we go. Full screen. Look at that. 
It's so beautiful. You are beautiful. Just, oh my God, I got so much real estate. I'm about to give you a preview to many, 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 many hours worth of configuring, toying, installing, uninstalling, playing around with, trying to figure out all of that wrapped into this dashboard that I am not happy with, and it is definitely, absolutely, positively not in its final form. But there you go. I have cameras. I got four cameras right there. I can control my garage door from right there. I have my lights, right? I have some of them. Oh, my drive lights are not working. Oh, there they are. So I have drive lights are grouped, right? So I got three of them. I got just a single front porch light. Wait, did that? There we go, okay. Got garage lights, back porch light. Ooh, we got some fans, living room fan. Nice. Oh, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. I can see the way I have it configured. Um, I'm still working on this because I can tie it into my Ford and I can get like my battery status, which is actually an important thing to know because yeah. So I'm not done with that area. I'm actually, again, not done with anything. Uh, I have thermostats. I have some sensors. So this will tell me what it is in my attic, the, both the temperature and the humidity. You can obviously see the 1080p hard at work here because that is difficult to read. I mean, it's just kind of, I put a little green thing on there and I'm really starting to regret that. Like it glows and it just makes it blurry. And why does that keep going offline? All of my smart stuff is Miros and Miros connects to the cloud and then they ended up like banning pretty much the MQTT request because they got flooded with all the IoT requests for home assistance. So then you install Miros LAN and then it mostly works, but not all the time. The driveway, the center driveway light, I realized is not um, as reliably connected as pretty much everything else because it's behind a bunch of stuff and it just drops out a signal. So um, it'll go in and out. That's the point of that. It'll, it'll go in and out. Nest thermostat, obviously got that set up in there. I can turn it to like heat, cool, or just cycle, you know, keep it heat or cool. Uh, I got the weather. I have my power. So this is reading everything in my house that's coming in. And then everything that's going from the house to the server room, the server rack also feeds my main computer. And then also I'm reading what goes to my HVAC because those are the primary things that take all the power. And then on top of that, I am, so I have all of my servers here and I've been playing with different variations. So this is kind of all over the board a little bit. Uh, so I have, uh, this is my Plex server. You can see that here. It shows the CPU memory, CPU temperature, and the hard drive temperature, which is actually the max hard drive temperature in the whole thing. And then I have it tied in to see exactly what that's pulling. So that is idling right now at 729 watts. I have used so far for the day, 16 kilowatt hours. And so far the, for this month, I have used 97.5 kilowatt hours. Keep in mind, it is uh, April 6th or something. Yeah, it's April 6th. So that's April 6th. So the instant power, daily power, and monthly power is tracked for my main server. Then the new server, which is that one right there. So that's the home assistant server right there, which is a Threadripper 3990. So it is barely using any CPU at all, barely using any memory. And then this is the DVR, which is actually 65C. So that's up there a little bit, uh, 50 kilowatt hours. Compare that to that. It's half what Loki is right there. And this is my main computer, 183 watts, just kind of chilling right now, not really doing much of anything, but all of those are tracked. I don't have a tracker on this one, but that is my Synology NAS, and I can see the stats on that. I'm also monitoring my battery situation, so it'll tell me what voltage it is. Later on, once I get into this, I'm gonna set up like an automation to where I can get alerted when the voltage drops for whatever reason. I don't know, I gotta play around with that. And then this will tell me my total monthly, like this is calculating the month. This will give me my total monthly so far of power consumption for the whole house, power consumption for my server rack, and power consumption for my HVAC. So far in April, I have used a little bit under 500, whoa, I did not touch that. Okay, whoa, look at that, okay. What the? Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, I just, I just opened up my garage door. Yeah, I can hear it. Well, you know what? Let's demonstrate that. 
Let's see what that does. I, I uh, change that to do something. There we go. Look at that. Fancy that, huh? That's fancy. Okay. Touch is all screwed up. Crazy thing is, is I didn't touch it. See, look at that. I didn't even touch it. I didn't even touch it. And it's like, it's triggering. Okay. Um, yeah. 227 and 86. Oh, what the hell? I'm not even touching this. Come on. Just do it again. You know you want to. Do it. I didn't do that. See? I didn't do that. Was not me. Okay, this could potentially be a problem if it's just randomly clicking, activating buttons that require zero authentication randomly throughout the day. It'll just turn on and off everything, opening up garage doors and stuff like that. That is a terrible thing. Mm. I, I don't know why it's doing that. Huh. Okay. Hair falling on her or something? Like, what is that? <sighs> Holy crap. Holy crap. It was literally hair was on it. That was, that was what it was. Hair was on it. So is it broken or is it super sensitive? Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to see if there's software or anything to actually configure this. I'm going to do that and I'm going to put this back up on the wall because the cat will absolutely walk on it. I'm trying to do stuff, but the cat is down there even though I put it on the wall. The cat is down there chasing around the mouse. Or up there. Okay, yeah, yeah, see? Earlier I was just trying to do something. It's like every everywhere I go... You can tell the cat's trying to chase the mouse. But that's it, watch. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I'm trying to use this thing. You know, I'm trying, you are the problem, okay? You are the reason why this isn't working. I didn't get it on camera, but she chased her out. Good puppy. I'm going through here and downloading things and just installing everything I can. So here's a silicone laboratories, silabinum. 319 of 2014. Let's say that I really don't know what I'm doing, but I downloaded some stuff and I'm running something and I, I'm i not sure if it's working, but we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see. Okay, I have, I think, updated the driver. I think I did. And I just unplugged it to reboot it, plugged it back in. Now, I loaded a touchscreen calibration thing. I think that might hopefully potentially help. Looks like I got to hmm. do that a few times and yes. Nowhere to save how, how sensitive it is. I think it's better. I'm pretty sure that I had a gnat like bouncing on it before. I don't have a gnat right now, but if this thing can be set off by a gnat and then randomly set off while I was using it, which is what was happening, then that would not be a good thing to have like on the wall, accepting commands, potentially opening the garage door. So I don't really know if I wanna like get bolts and put this on the wall and go through that entire thing and mess with it just to be like, ah, I don't wanna leave it online because you know, it would open up things in the middle of the night. That would suck. This comes with the first reality check that if you put all of the power into the hands of, there you go, Home Assistant, if you put all of the power into hands of Home Assistant, you can literally control it with Home Assistant by a click of a button. You can't hear it, but it's opening. And that was a lot faster to respond. So here also, before I finish this, I set up Plex to show how many is watching, which looks like a zero and it shows how many transcoding. I made that. If you guys recognize the icon, I had to recreate it manually, not that hard, but I recreated it just so I can animate it. I don't know if I'm really loving it, but I have a template, so that's neat. But with the Home Assistant, I'm really digging just like all of this. I'm not sure if I wanna move this. I've been playing around with like different layouts and stuff. I'm not sure if I wanna put that at the top of the screen. I've been messing around with uh, uh, kiosk mode. So that has kiosk mode enabled, but it's not working. So I have to figure that out. 
that's just like one of those things. But um, I want to get rid of the sidebars and all that other stuff. And let's go ahead and close that garage door. So I want to, there's so much more configuration. There's so much more that I keep messing with, but so far I'm loving it. Also, I had to set an automatic refresh because this little add-on right here that registers the moving bars because I like the way it looked, sometimes that'll freeze and, you know, you have to like refresh the screen. So, you know, I set that up to where it's just an automatic refresh. A little reload there. I guess today's video is like an intro to the Home Assistant rabbit hole, which is the primary reason why I didn't want to get into this because I knew... There were so many different things that you could do with it, and I knew I would sink a bunch of time into it. What you see here is a product of a ton of different cards, which is what they call these little boxes or whatever. A ton of different cards that I have put in, configured, played with, deleted, merged them, moved them, all kinds of things. This is what's after, like, so many hours of just messing around with it. So there you go. That is the potential starter screen for what I have. Which actually, no, it's not, damn it. I made a custom background for this, so. Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, there we go. There we go. This entire video did not have my background. I made that. I combined multiple different ones. That's the end result. That is what it should look like, or at least start to look like. I like the background. I'm actually thinking about animating those things in the background to where they're just slowly moving. I thought that would be cool, but a resource hog. Gotta admit though, it's kinda cool looking. Well guys, sometime between now and a few months, I need to go to the hardware store and I need to get some bolts and really I just need to like prop this up right there and do a test run on a screen that doesn't actually have control over anything because this, leaving this open, scares the crap out of me. Just like that fish that like spent someone's money or something because they rigged it to do touchscreen stuff, the cat could literally come in here and like just touch it and open up the garage door, turn on lights, turn them off, shut down stuff. Wait, do I have a shut down computer thing? I don't. So really it's just the garage door, but I can configure it to turn things off like my servers. No, that's a terrible idea. There's absolutely no reason to have that on Home Assistant. No, don't do that. Okay. If you guys have any recommendations, jump in the comments down below. I know a lot of you guys are totally into this, so let me know. What do you see here? What do you think? Give me some ideas. What, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for just an example of cards where people do and configure stuff and they give you the source and the things that they install and they're like, check out what I did. And then I can take that, steal it, reconfigure it, and then claim it as my own.